When I was 10 years old, my father bought this five acres here. He wanted to move out to the countryside out here in Inverness and build our, our family house out here as a kind of a refuge. He believed, I think, in less bureaucracy and more community spirit and designing and creating what you think really works for you. We felt it was great just because there was these very experimental things that were going on. It was being part of the process of designing, even as a child. My brother said I would like to be able to climb up a telephone pole to get to my room. These were the pegs that he had to climb up, and there was a hatch. Now it's been closed off to get into his room. I know that was part of my dad's approach. Work closely with the people, imagining and envisioning what type of spaces to create. We weren't following set traditions from the past. There's fluid creativity where things happen more spontaneously. When I was a kid, I felt my dad was opening doors for the adventures to happen. I knew he was a professor at UC Berkeley and he taught there, but I don't think at that age you really think, oh, he's a significant architect in the world. This day, I chiseled four mortise joints to receive the tenants that will be framed in our sauna. It's taken me a long time to get over the guilt of spending days hard at work, learning to do things that I wasn't trained to do. That's me, Sin van der Rijn, School of Architecture, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> My dad's always trying to build things that help people. This is the accordion house. This house can fold out. This was built for migrant farm workers. Here is the build yourself a place in the country class from UC Berkeley that he and Jim Campy taught here on the land. And of course, no permits were being involved in this process. There's a, a man in the white hat. <laughs> Remember that guy? <laughs> This is a record of a 10-week second year university class in architecture which took place three consecutive days a week on five acres wilderness site right here. Most of what we were doing had to do with ways that we could change our environment to be able to live in more in balance with natural forces. We tore down chicken coops in Petaluma. Mm -hmm. They were cut in half because that's how we had to carry it back here. I had a big red truck. We were able to bring these students up here to the land. We called it the land at the time. They built in a way that was more sustainable, and it was also done without permits, because in order to be innovative and creative and affordable, you had to just sort of do it first. And that was kind of that's why we're outlaw builders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sim van der Rijn was leading a kind of subversion of the architecture profession. He was teaching at an accredited school of architecture to create a kind of professional class that really understands building through building codes uh, and zoning. But he took students to the land and turned them into outlaw builders. You would get caught usually, and after that you would then prove that the way you're doing it was better for the environment and eventually, of course, the planet. Sim's interest in outlaw building took him into what we now call sustainability. Of course, there was no word like that for it then. It was just called ecology. There were really important breakthroughs in terms of a new culture of sustainability that were prototyped in the outlaw builder phenomenon. The first building was the Ark. It became our central meeting space. This is where we had our classes, but also where we ate when it was too cold to eat outside. Most of the students were picking up a hammer and a nail for the first time. So that was the bigger part of our teaching. They learned fast. After we built the ark, each student made very creative places for their own living space based on their personalities. One student built himself a treehouse. There was the wonderful little Japanese tea house. Then another person created her little shelter out of a cable school. What they were building really expressed the desire to build a new world. They were living in a more communal situation. They were sharing more, and they were learning together, and they were helping each other, and that was our life together. 
from Sims' passion for ecological sustainability, a new state governor, Jerry Brown, made Sim California state architect. One of the important developments under Sim was the Office of Appropriate Technology. The office was setting up wind power, solar power, changing zoning, doing the kind of things that really today we're just rediscovering. Sim van der Rijn was really a visionary, not just in the immediate design environment of a building, but in the broader built landscape of our world. Everybody got their certificate. I was the yeah. logisticus maximus because I was the one that was able to get the materials. Then you'll have Sim van der Rijn, who was Neotoma fusipus rex, and that's the head wood rat because we lived with the wood rats here. Sim and I have continued doing the things that we started doing back 50 years ago throughout our lives and our careers. At the time, there was an emergency for the planet, which there still is, and we need to be doing more of this now. Mm -hmm.